What's your favorite thing about China that you don't have in the UK? Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> May face huge pressure, especially for women in my country. The government of China is investing a lot of money for Chinese people to be trained in Cambridge or for Harvard. And after that, come back to China to use that expertise in developing things for improving China. The children fees. <laughs> Are you directly paying your fees here or how is people managing that? The condition is not that good, as good as in the British. What have you shocked you the most from coming from China to the UK? Estamos aquí con... Hi, I'm Jimmy. I study in economics at Cambridge and I'm from the northeastern part of China. Hi, I'm Kaya. I'm from uh, China and I love Cambridge. Uh, hello, my name is Sisi. I'm from Beijing, China and I'm now studying, I'm doing economics at Cambridge. How much money would you need for studying here per year? I'm pretty sure per, per year it should be over 50 for international students. Over 50? 50 students, yeah. Per year? Yeah, including the tuition fee. Are you directly paying your fees here or how is people managing that? Like, are people directly paying themselves the fees or it's like any kind of grant or whatever? By their parents. <laughs> so people mostly rely on parents? Yeah, yes. mostly. Yes, also for the... Because for Chinese students, it's very hard to get a chance to, you know, to obtain the scholarships or some funding because the, I think it's the competitive setting, the environment of this, the international students. So for Chinese students, personally, I think it's rely on the parents. Yeah. Uh, I think it depends. Uh, well, for students at under 25, I think they are basically just depends on, us, on their parents. Do you think for that, parents are starting like debts or they have previously that money saved in order yeah. to give you that money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For parents that they know they will, you know, have the investment, the educational investment for their child, their kids, so they will keep up or save some money for the students. Is that a lot of money for you as well in China? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. In in China, we don't have to pay that much. It's like just like one hundred pound per year. Wow. Yeah. yeah for wow. The, for public school, public university. For one year. Yeah, for one year. Fuck. And for the in, in Spain is 1,000 and it's really, really, really low. In Spain is 1,000 per year, it's really low. For you, it's 100. 100 pounds, maybe. And for the living fee, it's just like accommodation, maybe also 100. Or yeah, nearly free. Nearly, nearly, nearly free. free. Yeah, it's, nearly free. It's, it's really cheap for yeah, accommodation. Really cheap. But for our, public. yeah, but, public, yeah. But, but the condition is not that good, as good as in the British. Uh, like w we have to share the room with four students so yeah and our beds are just next to each other okay. so uh, yeah and how much money are you paying here for living uh, for my accommodation uh, per month I think the rent is 200 pounds maybe. 200 pounds 200 per week oh no sorry per week per week per week per week, per week. Uh, 200 pounds and for the food for the living fee maybe one day, I think it's 20 pounds, one day. Yeah. YT per week and for food also 10 to 20 per day. So what's then your conclusion regarding all the things that we have talked like regarding the investment, it's a lot of money, it's worthy, it's not, what do you think? Uh, the tuition fee is really, <laughs> it's on hold. I have to say so, especially for the international students, it's 38,000, so it's really a big amount. For me. That's the, Do you think it's worth yeah. it? Um, yeah, it will be worse, but no, no. Maybe some days, maybe after 10 years, yeah. but no, no. Yeah, and also what you said about the experience. Oh yeah, that yeah doesn't the need experience. To be, that doesn't need matters. to be worthy, but maybe the experience is the thing that's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's cool. yeah. I think uh, living here, studying here, uh, is pretty worse, and also um, I think it's very good memory when I get old and when I flash back, you know, yeah. in my memory, in my head, I can, you know, remember these um, moments. Yeah. Yes. But for us, uh, the most urgent thing is to. Know, to get a degree, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, reach the distinction or something. Yeah.
Equivalent. Una cosa que me comentaron muy interesante fuera de cámaras es que cuando vienes de China a estudiar a universidades como Cambridge o Oxford y vuelves después a tu país, eres básicamente un fuera de serie. Me dijeron que el hecho de tener este título, este prestigio, esa titulación tan codiciada por muchísimos chinos, les hacía destacar muchísimo sobre toda su competencia al volver a su país. Y luego son capaces de alcanzar puestos de trabajo que muchísimos otros chinos estarían soñando. Aparte de que son mucho más reconocidos en su trabajo y los valoran mucho más por haber sido capaces de académicamente ser tan excelentes como para poder entrar en Cambridge y haberse desarrollado a ese máximo nivel. Sin duda es una inversión enorme la que tienen que hacer, pero el luego quizá en el futuro pueden recoger. Básicamente me dijeron, también me comentaron que muchas veces hay personas súper ricas, extremadamente ricas, que vienen a Cambridge y se pagan absolutamente todo. No como ellos, sino por ejemplo también a la hora de hacer un doctorado, pagan los 50.000 libras que necesitas para poder inscribirte y vivir. Pero aparte, hacen un self-funded PhD, es decir, pagan todos los experimentos, pagan todos los materiales, todos los agentes que están utilizando. Por ejemplo, si hay que comprar células, si hay que comprar material, medio de cultivo, si hay que hacer una secuenciación, que son ya mil libras o cualquier otra cosa, súper cara, lo pagan absolutamente todo. Entonces, entras en la tesitura de decir qué investigador te va a decir que no si eres un tío que tiene estudios, da igual de dónde y da igual tus capacidades, pero le estás diciendo que le vas a pagar tú absolutamente todo. Si lo piensas, para ese investigador es como si estuvieras recibiendo una financiación gigante de una empresa o una financiación gigante de una beca de una convocatoria pública o privada. Es como, ¿cómo vas a decir que no? Me, me, me parece muy llamativo que haya personas tan ricas que puedan hacer realmente esto. Porque ya conocemos becas de doctorado, como por ejemplo en este vídeo que te dejo por aquí, en la que una beca de doctorado cubriendo todo, salario, vida, experimentos, puede llegar a medio millón de euros. ¿Cómo va a decir un investigador que no a medio millón de euros por un tío que dice que quiere trabajar contigo y que quiere reventarlo? y que va a hacer ese cargo de todo el pago. Al final es muy loco si lo piensas, porque sí que es cierto que con dinero no se puede conseguir todo. Por ejemplo, el título no lo estás realmente comprando con dinero porque estás trabajando durante esos cuatro años, pero el hecho de tener muchísimo dinero te está facilitando y abriendo las puertas de una manera súper fácil que te permite literalmente hacer el doctorado de una forma muchísimo más sencilla. Sin necesidad de tener un currículum súper atractivo y súper desarrollado para conseguir becas porque tu capacidad económica te permite pagártelo tú mismo. Por tanto, en este caso el dinero está siendo un acelerador increíble y seguro que además hay personas que están en desacuerdo de esto porque en cierta parte es injusto. Estás compitiendo contra personas que quizá tienen mejor currículum que tú, pero por el hecho de tener muchísimo más dinero vas a llevar tu puesto. Y la verdad que es un debate bastante interesante porque si al final es el mismo el que está usando su economía para financiar sus estudios y sus investigaciones, está en su derecho de hacerlo pero a la vez está consiguiendo un puesto de una forma muchísimo más fácil. Por tanto, se abre un debate súper, súper interesante. Así que dejadme en comentarios lo que pensáis sobre esto y seguimos con el vídeo. I once heard that the Chinese government were giving a lot of grants for Chinese people to come to this kind of universities. How does this work? This is like the CSC, uh, CSC scholarship, but it's very limited. So they only give uh, the scholarship to a very limited group of people. Yes, and also depends on the major. Yeah, the major, yeah. And uh, for the science or engineering, engineering. Uh, robots, AI, it's maybe. Like the computer science. Yeah, the Chinese government will support us. I'm more willing to give them the scholarship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, like for humanities, like environment, uh, I, I don't think the government will uh, go, provide, too yeah, provide too much. Yeah. So, how does it exactly work? They give you all the money you need for living and studying in universities like ah. Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard? Or uh, how does it work? For my friends, uh, one of my friends that uh, he got the, the scholarship, the CSC, and the tuition fee will be covered, okay. full, fully covered. Like the forty thousand per year. Yeah. Uh, yes, maybe. But yes, I think the uh, the most part is the tuition fee, and we we'll also gave some support for the living fee, but it's only small proportion. You have to give it back to the government somehow, or you have to come back to China after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, wh what are the conditions? Maybe five years after you have uh, graduated from the PhD, uh, you will come back to China compulsory. And you can go to whatever university or have to be a really good one. Most people go to Cambridge or for Harvard, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm at MIT. <laughs> MIT, yeah. <laughs> MIT, yeah. Yale. Yeah. Yale, Harvard. Yeah, Howard, 
UCB Berkeley or most of the thing in the USA. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very interesting, right? Because the government of China is investing a lot of money for Chinese people to be trained in the best places in the world and after that come back to China to use that expertise in developing things for improving China. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. 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 So it's would really you like sense. to live in China? Then? Of course. It's I would say it's far better than UK. Everything is cheap. Everything is convenient. But it's really, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. And it's far more than, than this. So, of course. What's your favorite thing about China that you don't have in the UK, for example? Delivery. Oh, delivery. Delivery. What? Sorry? Uh, delivery food. We got like 10p for delivery fee. And I, I, you are foodie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm foodie. So everything is cheap there, and everything is coming there. You can use the QR code, your, your phone, to scan QR code to buy anything you want, to get anything you want. So everything is quite convenient. I think the family is very important, and also some friends. Um, also, the living environment is very, you know, convenient. You can get access to a lot of things. Um, you don't have to pay very high to, you know, get educated or get worked up for here. Um, it's pretty high. It's pretty expensive. Uh, to be honest, I, I haven't fully get used to the, the culture and the style here. So maybe I will go back to China after my MPhil, uh, MPhil degree. Yeah, and I, I think the most thing I like my country is that it's really convenient. Yeah. Yeah, and the government is more it's more efficient to be honest. Yeah. It's more efficient for? for more efficient. Yeah, more efficient. Uh, yeah, I think. And what do you think regarding working conditions here in China? Uh, there is a common trend that the the working the environment is like going to be more competitive for the UK or for the China. Uh, you can see a lot of people just uh, get fired. I think the British working uh, working condition and working environment is more friendly compared to my country because um, you know there's a there's a huge uh, population in, in China so we may face uh, like huge pressure uh, especially for women in my country but um, I still tend to go back. Also for studying, right? For going to university and these things, there is like a huge pressure in China, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think compared to like applying for a foreign university, is uh, you must pay more, uh, pay more effort uh, if you wanna like be enrolled in a top tier Chinese university. What have you shocked you the most from coming from China ah. to the UK? So, oh, maybe food. There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's no. No, no much choice here, yeah. So uh, I'm shocked that every day we we have potato for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it shocked me a lot. The inflation. The inflation. The inflation. Yeah. Okay. Cause uh, everything like five times than you than China. Like actually, compared to the Chinese price. Yeah. yeah. And regarding technology, because before you said this thing about delivery, other things that shocked you regarding technology. Maybe the QR code. Because in China we we just like use the QR code yeah, to the yeah to scan everything choice. yeah and yeah the, yeah, the, the payment choice we don't have to you know to type all the bank details to buy to buy some things we just yeah, yeah scan carry. code okay yeah, yeah. okay espero que os haya gustado muchísimo el video cuál es vuestra opinión nos vemos en el próximo video os leo en comentarios